the lock was beautifully cut, just the edge of an oval glass set into a frame that was pushed between the lentils of the lantern. It was only part of the castle, in front of her was a meadow, and in the meadow Genevieve dreamed of something in a dress with a blue belt. Both the castle and the meadow were yellow, and I knew this even before they showed me in the lantern, I saw clearly their color in the golden sounds of the word Brabant. Golo stopped and sadly listened to the explanation, which my great-aunt read aloud, apparently, this was quite understandable to him, for, in strict accordance with the text, he assumed a pose not devoid of some majesty. Then he cowardly again. And no force could stop his small links. If the lantern was moved, I saw Golo's horse ride over the window curtains, rounding on the folds and descending into the recesses. The body of Golo himself, made of the same extraordinary substance as the body of his horse, adapted to every material obstacle, to every object that blocked his path, it turned it into its frame and filled it with itself, even the doorknob was instantly applied and floated on it by his red robe or his pale face, all the same thin and sad, but not showing the slightest sign of embarrassment from this bonelessness of his. Clearly, I found beauty in the light images that seemed to radiate the Morovin and past, scattering sparkles of ancient times around me. But I cannot express how unsettled I was by the intrusion of mystery and beauty into the room, which I finally managed to fill with my eye to such an extent that I paid more attention to it than to myself. As soon as the anaesthetic effect of the habit ceased, sad thoughts and sad feelings returned to me. The doorknob in my room, which for me differed from all other handles in that it seemed to turn by itself, without any effort on my part, this movement became so unconscious for me, now represented the astral body of Golo. And as soon as the dinner bell rang, I ran to the dining room, where every evening a large hanging lamp shone, which had no idea about Golo or Bluebeard, but knew my family and was aware of what she was, and rushed into my mother's arms. The misfortunes of Genevieve of Brabant tied me even more strongly to her, and Golod's atrocities made me question my conscience with even greater predilection. After super I had to, alas, to leave mother, and mother talked with others in the garden if the weather was fine, or in a small living room where everyone gathered in inclement weather. Everyone, except for my grandmother, who claimed that in the country it is a pity to sit in a stuffy room, and on especially rainy days she had endless arguments with my father, who told me to go to read in my room. So the boy will never be strong and energetic with you, she said with a sad look, but he needs to get better and develop willpower in himself. The father shrugged his shoulders and looked at the barometer. He was interested in meteorology, and the mother, without making a fuss for fear of angering him, looked at him with touching reverence, but not very intently, so as not to somehow penetrate the secret of his superiority. But grandmother in any weather, even when it was raining and Francoise was in a hurry to carry away the precious wicker chairs, otherwise, no matter how wet, she walked in an empty garden, in the pouring rain, throwing back her grey dresses and exposing her forehead to the life-givingness of rain and wind, 